My name is Alan Butler, owner of Butler Farms Incorporated. Shell Town is actually where my location to farm is, and we farm about 500 acres. I'm the fourth generation farmer here on this farm. It's been, I guess you say, passed down from generation to generation. And since I've been a baby, it's been vegetables grown on this farm, and that's all I know how to grow is tomatoes, watermelons, cantaloupes, peppers, corn, soybeans, and wheat. Some of it goes to Boston, some of it goes to Philadelphia, some of it goes to Baltimore, and we have a local fruit stand trade that comes here and buys from us every day. We have to ship all of our stuff away from here because we live so far south in Maryland. Virginia's my neighbor on the other side of the river. We have a challenge because we do have a Pocomoke River here at times that we can have some of our cropland go underwater. The financial side can be devastating and it can be a disaster if it came through say July or August when we're picking because obviously three, two to three foot of water you wouldn't pick nothing else in that field. Basically crop insurance is not going to make you money. It keeps you from losing your farm because it will end up paying for your bills. On the tomato side it costs about $5,000 an acre to grow that crop from beginning until you get to the harvesting. And if you would have a hail storm or a I have to have some coverage where I can not lose my farm as far as outstanding debt and money that's invested into the crop is the reason we carry crop insurance. Just learn to live with the risk factors and you don't let it bother you but so much because the good Lord should be looking out for you. This is truly a family farm still which has decided everything here. The family make decisions on what is done here. We um, work together. I mean, we obviously have people out here working underneath of us but family still makes all the decisions on what's planning, where it's planning, and one time it's planning. We have, we're versatile. I do have poultry, which i am got probably 300,000 chickens total. We do grow corn and soybeans and wheat, and we do have watermelons. We do have peppers, and we do have cantaloupes and tomatoes. So if one market is bad, hopefully we can make and stay in farming by the other stuff we're growing on the farm. Looking back over things over time, what I see today versus, say, 20 years ago, but I wasn't really looking at it that way in 20 years ago. When farmland was cheap, I should have been buying farmland, and I didn't. And farmland is getting harder and harder to come by because it's less and less of it around. And because the developers are in this area buying farms and developing them, people don't realize when you take your better agriculture land out of production, that means you will not have it for later generations. In my eyes now, if you're out here looking at to buying something versus land versus um, machinery or versus a vehicle ride up down the road in, you're better off to buy the land because the land will be there forever. Your equipment and your vehicles will wear out and you won't have them. The reason I love doing it, I love to watch stuff grow. I guess it's been in my blood my whole life. It's just something, the way of life about me. It's not easy work. It's seven days a week. I don't get no downtime this time of the year just to the standpoint of what goes on here because the crop or the tomatoes or cantaloupes, watermelons or peppers, whatever it is, it doesn't take off for Sunday. If it's mature and ready to pick, you're going to pick it on Sunday or Saturday or Monday. It's just how life is in farming. We're the keepers of the land.